This is a lab exercise captured on video on the topic of quadrature, amplitude modulation taken from the Lab 6 of the Dreamcatcher, ME1010 University courseware. We are going to demodulate the IQ signal using VSA software, and measure the error vector magnitude, of the modulated, RF signal, using a mixed signal oscilloscope and Keysight VSA software. To get the most out of this lab exercise, you should view the video along with the lab sheet. Please download the lab sheet from this link. You may want to pause this video to read the lab sheet first before proceeding with the video streaming. Quadrature, amplitude modulation consists of both, analog and digital modulation. It combines amplitude shift keying and phase shift keying, in such a way that, maximum contrast between each bit is achieved. The implementation of quadrature, amplitude modulation is done by, changing both the amplitude and phase of a carrier signal. Each, unique combination of amplitude and phase is a symbol, and the symbols are then translated into, IQ signals. Normally, the number of amplitude shifts is fewer than the number of phase shifts. It is because, amplitude changes are susceptible to noise, and require a greater shift differences, than phase changes. In this lab session, we are going to study the digitally modulated quadrature amplitude modulation waveform, using an oscilloscope and ME1010 digital modulation kit. We will then demodulate the modulated signal using Keysight's VSA software. The ME1010 Digital Modulation Kit uses a full digital approach to implement a standard IQ band pass modulator system with 10 MHz carrier. It incorporates a field programmable gate array chip, a high speed digital to analog converter chip, and high frequency analog circuitries, such as amplifiers and filters. Various probing points, are also available for you, to study, and, analyze the effect of the modulated signal at various stages. The ME1010, Analog Digital Modulation Board is a versatile system, that can produce a variety of digitally modulated band pass signals. It is also programmed to produce standard analog modulated signals such as, AM, and FM signals. The default radio frequency carrier used by the system is 10 MHz. In addition to the RF outputs, the ME1010 board, has a number of analog and digital outputs. For instance, you can observe the baseband IQ channels voltage, baseband digital data, data clock, symbol clock, etc., to understand how a digital transmitter operates. This modulation kit, is capable of producing various types of standard analog and digital modulation waveforms, such as sine wave, AM, FM, BASK, FSK, BPSK, QPSK, 8PSK, 16QAM, 64QAM, To begin, the lab experiment, connect the digital input channel of an oscilloscope to the header pins, of baseband data, symbol clock and data clock. Then, connect channel 1 of the oscilloscope to the RF output port on the ME1010 digital modulation kit using a BNC to SMA coaxial cable. Connect channel 2 and channel 3 to the I and Q ports respectively using an oscilloscope probe.
On the Digital Modulation Kit, press the PB1 button to select Mode 8 for 16 QAM modulation format. Adjust the oscilloscope and observe the generated waveforms. Now, you should be able to observe the data clock, baseband data, symbol clock, IQ signals and RF modulated signals. Use the mapping table available in the lab sheet, to verify the IQ signal based on the baseband data. Observe the phase and amplitude changes in the RF modulated signal. Start by, identifying the bit stream of the baseband data. Determine the bit stream of each symbol. Please note that, one symbol clock interval is equivalent to four data clock interval. Due to the circuit design, the I signal and Q signal will experience a one symbol clock delay compared to the baseband data. By referring to the mapping table in the lab sheet, you can map each symbol into I and Q signals respectively. You can also observe and verify the phase and amplitude changes in the 16 QAMRF modulated signal, with the help of the mapping table. We have seen the baseband data, IQ signals and RF modulated signals generated by the ME1110 digital modulation kit. Now, we will proceed to the digital signal demodulation. First. Connect the RF output of the ME1110 training kit to channel 1 of the oscilloscope, using the BNC to SMA coaxial cable. Connect the oscilloscope to the computer where the Keysight's VSA software is installed using a USB cable. In the VSA software, set the center frequency to 10 MHz and the frequency span to 3 MHz. To demodulate the signal, select Measure Setup followed by Measurement Type. Then, select Digital Demod, to enable the digital demodulation. In the Digital Demod properties, set format to 16 QAM, symbol rate to 250 kHz, points per symbol to 4, and result length to 320 symbols. Next. Click on the Filter tab, and set both the Measurement Filter and Reference Filter to Rectangular. Also, remember to ensure that, the Pulse Search option in the Search tab, is disabled. Otherwise, the software may limit the maximum symbols in result length. In the Windows tab, change the display format to a 2x2 grid. Now you should be able to see the constellation diagram, spectrum channel, and error vector time. From the summary table, you can observe that, the EVM of the demodulated 16 QAM signal, to be approximately 1.4%. Now, we are going to measure the occupied bandwidth and channel power of the 16 QAM modulated signal. To measure the occupied bandwidth of the signal, click marker followed by OBW. Then set the power percentage to 91.6%. For channel power measurement, choose marker and select calculation. Set the center frequency of the power measurement to 10 MHz and the frequency span of 0.5 MHz. 
you can refer to the lab sheet for 16 QAM modulated signal bandwidth calculation. To obtain an accurate measurement result, you can enable averaging by selecting measure setup and setting RMS averaging to 10 counts. Now, you can observe the channel power of the signal measured to be minus 0.27 dBm, and the measured occupied bandwidth to be approximately 506 kHz. You have seen the digital demodulation of the 16 QAM signals. Now, we are going to study the digital demodulation of the 64 QAM signals. First, Disable the averaging, occupied bandwidth and band power measurement settings. On the ME1110 digital modulation kit, press the PB1 button, until number 9 is shown on the 7 segment LED. This will change the modulation mode to 64 QAM. As the 64 QAM signal has relatively small bandwidth, we will reduce the frequency span of the spectrum to 2.5 MHz. Then, in the digital demod properties, set the format from 16 QAM to 64 QAM. Symbol rate to 166.67 kHz points per symbol to 5, and result length to 200 symbols. Similar to 16 QAM signal demodulation, the 64 QAM signal demodulation uses rectangular filter, for both the measurement filter and reference filter. Also, please ensure that the pulse search option is disabled. Now, you should be able to observe the constellation diagram of the 64 QAM signal, displayed in the VSA software. To measure the band power and occupied bandwidth of the 64 QAM signals, enable the band power calculation and reduce the frequency span to 333 kHz. In the OBW tab, set the percentage power to 91.3%. Then, apply the RMS averaging to obtain a better accuracy of the measurement result. From the results shown in the marker window, the 64 QAM signal has a band power of minus 1.987 dBm and an occupied bandwidth of 335.7 kHz. In this lab session, we have learned about the quadrature, amplitude modulation, and the mapping techniques of the baseband data to the IQ signals and RF modulated signals. We have also performed digital signal demodulation on 16 QAM signals and 64 QAM signals by using Keysight's VSA software. Lastly, error vector magnitude measurement, channel power measurement, and bandwidth measurement of the demodulated signals have also been performed in the lab session. Thank you for viewing ME1110 lab on video. For more labs on video, please visit.